Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris Apocalypse in our High Dominion series. We have eliminated the Istrin Reavers, and we are now just adding their former territory to our own. As a matter of fact, I can go ahead and add this Starbase right now. And then it looks like Quiet Dark is in the process of being surveyed. And there's a ton of minerals in that system as well, so that's good to see. And we are also in the process of uh, laying down claim. Our influence per turn went down. That sucks. We're in the process of laying claim to nearby territory that belongs to the Krithakans, our longtime good buddies, Anomaly the Krithakans. The debris field which JQQ17 is part of rolls and swirls around royals and swirls around the influence of unknown forces. Complete. Interesting, we have another anomaly in the quiet dark. We've had a couple of anomalies pop up in the system. It's been forever since we've had any anomalies because it's been forever since we've had to scan any systems. So it's cool to see some new anomalies popping up. This is, of course, a high-level scientist. So he's okay. Yeah, we still actually never finished the alien specimen proc uh, procurement chain either. Hang on, we've got a few edicts to re-up here. What was that one? Master Teachings, Warring States. Uh, okay, that dropped our naval capacity a little bit, but we're still okay. Nice! We got a physics and engineering boost from this. So 21 and 25 just became 13 and 16 for the remaining time on those projects. Fantastic! So with that being done, hang System on. Information quarantine. Okay. Yeah, that's right. We had the, we had that going to help with governing ethics attraction. Help keep factions in line. But yeah, we are in the process of laying claim to the Krithakans territory so that we can declare war on them and enslave their population next. They will slowly replace the slaves on other worlds. We're not decadent anymore, so that we, we can definitely just make... We can do away with the slaves of that belong to all of our people. Once the Krithakan are enslaved. That'll be a nice advancement for the Sundrians. Our governor on Naranka Prime has been found dead. The, per the perpetrator was caught trying to make an escape, an assassin sent by the Sovereign Krithakan planets. The Zeno's disrespect... So that's... The Sovereign Krithakans are... Yeah, that's these guys. Um, let's see. We can reduce edict cost for a while and increase army morale for 10 years, basically. Keep the assassin as an information source. Yeah, I think I'd rather do that just for the influence gain. That way I can keep laying down claims here. So speaking of that, let's go ahead and pull up the claims interface and keep going. I want to go ahead and add Polaris, Colodor, Satatoni, and make those claims. We will very soon be able to launch our first war, and they are not going to stand a chance. It's going to be great. I am genuinely excited about this. So, <laughs> I'm sure you can hear it in my voice. No, I am. I'm just really focused at the moment. So, let's see. Well, Pawkins Armada is up here. All of my fleets are kind of in their moorings. I also am repairing my gateway here, finally, in Oaprinda. And that's only going to take a couple years. As a matter of fact, it's probably... Yeah, it's almost done. 160 days away. Also, I can start building habitats, but those are going to cost considerable amounts of influence each. Specifically, 200 influence each. I feel like that got tweaked. Because that's a huge amount of influence. New technology. Galactic Stock Exchange is available to us. Nice. Okay, so I think it's finally time to finish this <laughs> Starbase Capacity research. It's not going to take that long. And let me go ahead and add the Galactic Stock Exchange to Sindar Prime. I can probably add it to one of the remaining food tiles. That would be the best place to put it. Because we aren't really in need of food anymore. Oh yeah, that's right. It requires influence to put down. Dang it. Forgot about that. But this is extra energy credits for the rest of the game. Especially once we get our fleets back out of their moorings. And when we're over our naval capacity like we are right now. Having this in place will be helpful. So we're going to have to just wait until that is available. But we can do other stuff in the meantime. Ah right, yeah, let's, let's extend the deal. Also, do I have my... I don't think I have the curator research deal going right now. Let's check with them. Yeah, let's aid in our research. We would like to purchase this service. 
and we ran out of energy while we were fighting the Istran Reavers. So that was a little problematic. All right, we're 51 months from getting to start another policy tree, and we'll probably go for Harmony because we were strongly considering Harmony before. So it's the next logical option, I believe. Let us continue. The spice must flow. Yep. Let me go ahead and start queuing up additional citadels in key spots. And I want to see what doing a few more citadels kind of does to my territory. And also, there are some stations which I can genuinely... Like, well, this one has an anchorage, so this will remove some of my naval cap, but not much. It's just one anchorage and nothing bolstering it. Um, so I kind of... Some of these stations are no longer necessary, is the thing as well. So let me go ahead and start downgrading some of them. Okay, that completely just did that. Okay, cool. So it just, in one button, that removes all of it instantly. Fantastic. That's actually, that makes my life a lot easier. So Holden up here is not an anchorage at all. Let's go ahead and downgrade this. That's helping with our energy situation too. Again, these stations are just no longer necessary. Now, Avim, I think I had you in place. Actually, no, I don't need you either. Why did I put you in place here? I guess maybe, yeah, because that, that, this is at the bottom of their territory. So yeah, this can be downgraded. I no longer need to defend this area so ardently. All right, that's an anchorage. We're going to keep that. So is that. Obviously, they're both anchorages. And now we have room for more star bases where needed, which is pretty handy. So the Gemma station, I'm going to go ahead and make a citadel. And I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this as well. Where else? Yeah, the rest are, are still serving their own purposes. So let's see, the Enif station can definitely be a citadel. And then these need to be citadels, but we don't have the resources to upgrade them just yet. All right, so we're getting the Miravandia League laying claim to some systems up here. <laughs> Bring it on, guys. Especially once we control this space, it's... Construction complete. We are going to be the power to contend with in the galaxy. So they can lay claim all they want. One thing I would probably benefit from, though, speaking of that... Let me do another anchorage, this time in Isseus. I'm just going to have a station dedicated to bolstering my naval capacity back here. Just one. One more. We've already got a few. We have mastered a new technology. All right, tachyon sensors are done. Nice. Dark matter would improve physics research a good bit if I went ahead and did that now. Uh, is there anything else I want first? Not really. Yeah, let's go ahead and go for dark matter. Having that as soon as possible. And also in three months, we're going to have better mining network across the entire freaking empire. So can't wait for that. Claims. Okay, let's go ahead and claim Cytine. Mesa. Make claims. Awesome. Still making a good amount of influence per, or yeah, influence per turn. So that's helpful. our ships have been upgraded. More insults being hurled our way, for no reason. Our ships have been upgraded. We have mastered a new technology. Nice. Okay. So now let's go ahead and give those orders. Our mineral income is about to get a lot better. I'm, of course, holding down shift as I click all of these, so any planets that can do the upgrades twice, they will do so. Wow, Might and Prime is a powerhouse planet. Done. Basic Science Lab, and what else? The Obanir Station. Where was Yobanir again? Yeah, Yobanir's over here, so do another upgrade, please. Okay, new research project. Titans! Hey! So this can be our Kandrith class Titan at long last. Uh, is there any reason not to go for that right now? Nope, there's not. 
That's also going to improve fleet command limit. Command limit. In 30 months, we'll have that starbase capacity boost, which eh, will serve its purpose. Watch these bars, and as they complete, watch our mineral income go up. Also, I still need to babysit my sectors a little bit. As a matter of fact, before I do anything else, let's go ahead and go back to our sectors and see where they might need a little bit of help. You're good there. You're good there. We actually have two worlds called Neuronka Prime, so this needs to be Neuronka Secundus. It's because we colonized them both at the same time. Easy explanation, but still frustrating outcome. Fairly expensive here. I think this is our last one. Might have one more after this. are probably a few more worlds that I can colonize. I mentioned at the end of the last episode that I might consider making a sector out of some of these worlds that have been on the far left here. Complete. And I can turn the territory I'm about to take into that new sector. That's probably what I'll do. So I'll start it once the upgrade's done. I also need to check my blueprints and make sure that everyone is doing okay. Our ships have been upgraded. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's see, Corvettes, you've got enough power here. Let's see, do you do you have the latest of everything? Looks like you do. You do indeed. Good. Yeah, you've got more than enough power. As do you. Battleships definitely do. We'll have Titan, a Titan, before long. We can have a couple of Titans, but one will be all I need to start off. 29 months until our next policy arrives. Again, the second we adopt Harmony, we're going to get a pop growth speed increase on top of what we already have been enjoying, which is actually a 20% increase right now with our current surplus. All right, we are very close. Let's take a look at the claims system or the claims interface one more time. So we can go ahead and claim, I need to claim Wasat, Kolodor, and Mesa. Let me claim Wasat. That's done. Two more claims, and I'm going to launch my first warrant into their territory. They don't stand a freaking chance. I might even just send one fleet. They really do not stand a chance against me. I can't quite tell. Yeah, I can't see any ships belonging to them at the moment. And I feel like I have... I do have sensor... I can see all of their worlds at the moment, I believe. I think I can. Yeah, we have Intel level full. Now this is Intel level medium. So there are, there's gonna be some ships back here that we can't see. Incoming transmission. Not aggression pack, no, Sindrithians. I don't know why you, think you can make deals with me, but you definitely cannot. Yep, let's get our unity bonus back. Also, hang on, let's see if we have... I want to make sure I've got all of my deals. Yep, there's that. And Zuracorp? Yep, we do. Goody, goody. Goody, goody indeed. Ah, we need to add you. And we're almost able to. Go. Yeah, we definitely need to add you. That's a lot of extra minerals per turn. Plus, we don't want pirates spawning in there. I think our pirate risk is probably quite low. Yeah, 0%. So we don't have to worry about pirates spawning right now, but... Still... Just keeping an eye on it. Build those mining stations. Construction complete.
Okay. Again, we're waiting on our influence to pile up just so that we can add... Construction complete. What? Two more systems? Construction complete. We already have a claim on Wasat. We have a claim on Saitine. Construction complete. Uh, Wait, have I? I think I have claimed them all, actually. I'm, maybe I'm misreading this. We already have one claim on Mesa. Yeah, I'm, I'm misreading it. It's it's a little bit misleading. But these are the ones we don't have claimed. So I do kind of want to claim Arrakis um, as a system. Before I... Because that has a wormhole entrance in it. Have been upgraded. I want to have control over that. So before we declare war, we are going to complete. make that the northern border of our hegemony. Get those upgrades done. Okay, now these citadels are ready to go. So the Spica station... Let's go ahead and add a resource silo. And the Saldropis station... I can do a listening post here, why not? The Enif station... Oh, wait, I've already got one there. So that's why not. That's the exact reason why not. Okay, so then we'll do... Let's just do a hyperlane registrar. If there are any border fights in this territory, I'll do the same here. I mean... <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it too much, but... That's, I think it's the most sensible choice of the ones that I have. Okay, so the propulsion expertise has been developed by one of our scientists. And then the Gemma station, which is up here. Same thing, Hyperlane Registrar. Right, you are definitely needing to be an Anchorage. And then the Yobanir station... I'm not going to worry about upgrading that before the fight starts, because it would take too long. All right, three months away from better starbase capacity. We might have some additional good research options there as well. Do we have a field manipulation researcher available anywhere? No, we don't. Plus, Sebakira is probably one of our better researchers already. All right, let's go to claims. All right, so these are the ones we control. Let's claim Kasora. And then we just need to claim Arrakis. That costs 80 influence. We have mastered a new technology. Okay, Starbase Capacity plus two. Climate Restoration, Naval Capacity. I think Naval Capacity is what I'm going to go for just to give us a bit of a break there. We need it. Especially once the anchorage is in place, that will... That, that situation will be completely resolved. There we go. All right, time for a new policy. And a new tree, actually. Pop growth speed increased by 25%. Excellent. Construction complete. And as a matter of fact, hang on. We've already got... Let's terraform this to an alpine world. And we do need to start thinking about... Worlds like these. Yeah, see, this one needs to be terraformed to an alpine world as well. We've got lots of resources. Toon world. I don't think I have climate restoration yet. No, I don't. Yeah, I need climate restoration for that. But you are ready. So let's make an alpine world. Same with you. And same with you. Okay, so let's get this party started, shall we? I'm going to bring my... I will bring Ralpakin and Galathor's armada in on this fight. So let's have them... 
both come visit and our, our income is still great. Yep, let's continue that deal. I'm glad to see that our income is still doing so well. I really can't wait until the Kazam Protectors are no longer in the area because we have a lot of Gaia worlds that we can just straight up take. Let's get those edicts started back. We need to get back up a, a, back up above 3,000 and we're almost to 80 influence so we'll be able to add a raucous to our core territory. See, one of our fleets is already quite close. Ralpakin's Armada is going to travel a little farther. Once we can build our own gateways, it'll be easier to hop around our territory a lot faster. I'm excited about that, and that should happen within this run, I think. I don't think we're going to take this series on break again before that happens. I could be wrong, but... Okay, we're up to 80 influence. I think we needed a little bit more than 80. But I could be wrong. Let's go ahead and go to claims. Nope, that's all we needed is the 80 flat. So let's go ahead and claim a raucous. Make claims, and we are going to go ahead and declare a war for all of that. What do we got? That's a lot of energy credits you're offering me. The Interstellar Airdog Coalition? Sure, I'll take it. Appreciate that. All right, so let's do this. Let's declare a war. This is a conquering claim. And we are going to... Yeah, they, they have a different war goal. Um, the Miravandi League and the Great Bakari Empire, it looks like, would join in this war, though. Hang on, I didn't notice that. Are you protectorates? Let's have a quick look. Oh, they have a federation status. No, that's not it. Non-aggression pact, independence guaranteed by Miravandia League. Ah, oh. so we would be going to war with Miravandia. They're inferior compared to us, so their fleet power... Okay, so actually we're not going to get this party started just yet because I want to make sure that my stations up here are ready to take on the Miravandia League. So we're going to change these to citadels. And we're going to build some defense platforms there. And also I'm going to go ahead and get a station going here as well because we need to. Okay, well that's good to know. Sorry for the fake out, but we're not going to launch this war until we are absolutely ready to deal with the Miravandia League's uh, possible retaliation. I'm glad I noticed that. Before declaring. Alright, so these will also be citadels when done. These anchorages will help with my naval capacity situation immediately. Yeah, we need Yobanir converted then too, because this is going to be a spot where the Miravandia League possibly comes into my territory. So we definitely need these improved. I am so glad Incoming I spotted that. Energy credits from the Great Bakari Empire. You know what? Sure. Still have a number of... I think we've got a bunch of terraform... Yeah, <laughs> seven terraforming projects going. Balawar is almost done. Farragon, almost done as well. Ooh, you definitely need to be... How do I not notice you sooner? That's a 25-slot world right there. And actually, once Carathor 4, which is a tomb world, gets added, we can do that. All right, we have an election underway. I'd be curious to see what new bonuses our leader will give us. Right now, we have someone that would have improved our army build speed. So we'll see who the new leader is. It might be the same leader. Right now, the leader is uh, Thalotha. All right, so those mining stations are being built as we speak. Elamani, previously scientist on the ATS Peshnab the Faithful. Interesting. Mm. 
Do we have a Voidcraft researcher available? I didn't see one. Nah. Alright, well, in that case, let's just have you be... that guy. And assist research, please. Good. Alright, Farragon and Balawar have just wrapped up. How are we doing on those construction projects over here? Let's make that a citadel. Let's make the Medoc station a Starhold. Let's make the Isia station a citadel, please. Actually, wait. First, let's do a naval logistics office, then do a citadel. So our energy and mineral deficit issues are going to go away as this station finishes. Construction complete. It's not the worst thing building up influence for a bit because we might need them for edicts during this conflict. Not the worst thing. Anchorage. Good. Crew quarters. Hmm... Where's the station again? It's down here. A resource silo would be good. Construction complete. Don't really need a crew quarters though. Hydroponics bay. I guess we'll do that. All right. So one thing I can consider now that our income is as awesome as it is, is Suthnar's armada can probably be bolstered all the way up. So let's go ahead and look at their fleet schematic as compared to like Galathor's armada. So right now with this one, we're looking at 16, 16, 8, 8, 5, 5, and 5, and then 3 and 2. Let's go ahead and get this thing ready. And then a couple of battleships. Alright, that's that. We can go ahead and add another Durama class cruiser as well to top off. Yeah. So Sugnar's armada now has a lot of room for reinforcement. Of course, that means we're going to have more ships, and our naval capacity problem is not going to be as helped out, but again, these anchorages, especially once the naval logistics office is built, are going to help. Plus, we have the naval cap research happening as well. We're one month away from possibly discovering dark matter. Really hoping we have it. We do have it. Very good. Okay, so defense grid supercomputer... That's tempting, but even more tempting is the Particle Lance. Let's go ahead and research Incoming that for our battleships. Alright, so the Confederation of Vural Palod wants to be a protectorate. I'm going to say no, because we're about to invade all of them and enslave all of them. Without mercy. Mirabandia League made peace with the Themlar Throng. Interesting. Oh, look what's happening here. I feel like they expanded a little bit. So the Themlar Throng is actually pushing back into the Miravandia League a bit, which means this could be a great time to attack the Krithokan Imperium. It's a status quo piece. So they kind of, the war ended rather inconclusively. But that probably means they had a lot of losses on both sides. Admiral Limithara has died. Oh, that's a shame. Admiral Thalatha is still available for some reason. I don't know why that Admiral is still around. Oh, they were our leader previously. That's what it was. Alright, I could do a stronghold here, but I already have a fortress, so I think I'm better off with a mineral processing place. Polissima Star Cancel joined the Sanguine League. Alright, so I guess that's the Blood League, maybe? Alright, where's Royal Pawkins Armada? Are you still on the way? Yeah, they're still on the way. So knows Armada just needs to continue to replenish. I 
and I'm not going to actually attack until these stations are ready, including building some platforms. So at that point, we'll jump in. I'll play this episode for a little while longer, just given the fake out here. All right, let's upgrade this. Given the fact that we thought we were going to attack him and then didn't have to. Construction complete. Okay, so this citadel is done. We could do a naval logistics office here. That makes perfect sense because there's Anchorage stations there. And then Tiam, same thing. Actually, we did the Anchorages a couple of times. I thought I was going to do... I might have done that by mistake. I might have intended to do um, hangar bays and did Anchorages instead. Not quite sure how that ended up happening, but I'm not going to fight it too much. I can build defense platforms and be okay. We've got an Ascension perk that gives us more defense platforms, so it is what it is. I'm guessing that's what happened, though. I might have meant to do fighter bays and added those instead. Can happen. Scientist Veldenura died. Do I have a scientist that can take their place? Um, that's a Voidcraft project. What if I did a recruit? Alright, we're currently working on what? Particles, Military Theory, and Voidcraft. And I think our... Actually, hang on, yep. That is the solution. Let's go ahead and recruit uh, Lintila. And then you... can take over there. Six months away from Titan design. So maybe we'll have our Titan ready before we take on the Miravandia League. How about that? We do have to build a Titan shipyard, I think. Construction complete. All right, Naval Logistics Office is going to bolster our naval capacity. Eh, not by a lot, though. Matter of fact, yeah. I'm going to do the Citadel upgrade after these anchorages are done, because I need the anchorages more than anything. All right, that's still upgrading. Taking its sweet time. I'm glad we got that, though. We have mastered a new technology. Okay, so now we have the Titan available to us. And... Impulse Thruster is probably a good idea. Let's go ahead and go for that so we have better engines on all of our ships, and our ships can travel space faster in general traverse space travel space whatever verb you'd like to use we have lots of influence available to us now let's go ahead and check our policies we can do information quarantine to improve governing ethics attraction let me go ahead and do master's teacher master's teaching is warring states because that will help instantly with some of our issue and i can also Reduce consumer goods cost if I turn on an improved energy initiative. That's a lot of my influence. Okay, that's that. Let's go ahead and reinforce Southern's Armada again because we're still not done. Yeah, naval capacity is actually back to normal. Capacity overload edict just went away though. That's a shame. I wish I had known that was about to be up. But it's okay, we'll have the chance to get it again soon. Okay, so waiting on a few stations at this point. Star Fortress, the Yobanir Station. This is a citadel, so it's ready to go. Let's go ahead and add a couple of things to it. Listing post is good. Target uplink computer is good. Communications jammer is good. And a disruption field generator as well. We're going to make sure it's as overpowered as it needs to be. All right, so Tiam, let's go ahead and start looking at some defense platforms. We can now also do the ion cannons as well. And those are super expensive. Okay, as are the defense platforms, actually. So let's just do a couple at a time. 
have mastered a new technology. What do we got? Naval capacity plus 30. Good. All right, so that helps a lot. And there's a core sector system endgame research option. Amazing. Okay. War exhaustion gain minus 10%. I should probably go ahead and add that just so that we can really... Yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. Hang on. Yeah, let's do that. Scientist Darmula has leveled up. All right, so we've got that defense platform underway. More coming. Okay. That situation's been resolved quite nicely. I just need to wait until my influence builds up and I can do capacity overload again. And I think I'm in good shape now to go ahead and launch the war. The only thing I would like to think about doing first is uh, let's take a quick look at this station. Now where? Yeah, Titan Assembly Yard. I think I can probably dismantle the Hyperlane Registrar and build a Titan Assembly Yard in the Sin system. And that'll be done in two years. And then we'll have the Titans available to us. By the way, if you want to look at the Titan blueprint, let's have a quick look at it together, shall we? Ship designer. So this is the... Oh, look at that thing. This is the Kagul class Titan. There's only one option for the Titan bow, for the Titan core, and for the Titan stern. I can go ahead and give it the zero point reactor. And for its aura, I do like the idea of having just better fire rate for all of our ships, the inspiring presence. Or maybe better tracking, so that we're better at hitting things. Let's do better tracking, how about that? Regenerative hull tissue probably needs to be on all of my ships, actually. Let's do shield capacitor, followed by auxiliary fire control. And then we'll have... Let's just do shields and armor. Perdition beam up front. And then how about we do some proton launchers here. Some rail guns here. And then on the stern, we could have a couple of gamma lasers. There it is. There's our Titan. Massive thing. That's awesome. All right, and this is the Kagul class, but we're not going to call it the Kagul class. We're going to call this the Kandrith class. Class. <laughs> Kandrith class. Titan. Save. That's our first executor in the history of the High Dominion. He did quite well. And yeah, so that's going to build at the Sin Station. Let me see if there's anything else I can do right now. I can probably build a few more defense platforms once my minerals have built up a little bit more. Um, let me quickly check to see what my resource trade deals are at the moment. Yeah, I'm already bolstering my energy a little bit. As much as I can, actually. We are getting a research boost from our current leader, which is nice. All right, I'm going to wait until we can launch our edict again. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. This is an interesting point at which to end, actually. So now that we're in the endgame phase, looks like we might have a war in heaven situation on our hands, and we have a number of... Oh, man. This is going to be a distraction, but it's still cool. Uh, it began as a subtle shift in cosm behavior, scattered reports of their ships, once rarely seen outside their own space, now being spotted in remote systems all across the galaxy. Highly advanced scouting vessels visiting ancient ruined worlds, refusing all hails, and fleeing when attacked, their purpose and mission unknown until now. We now know that the Cosm, that's these guys, were preparing, recovering the databanks of survey beacons and automated scouting posts left behind when they retreated to their present borders, gathering information for their return to the galactic stage. In Cosm space, fleets are gathering, armies are being mustered, and ancient factories roar to life. For the first time in an age, the Cosm Crusaders are looking outwards beyond their borders and towards the galaxy at large. As their decaying shipyards are repaired and refitted, and the dormant systems of Titan foundries come online, the rest of the galaxy is left with only one question. Who will this once sleeping giant target first in their quest to reclaim age-old glory lost? I wonder who they'll target first. Huh. You never know. Um, well, it'll be interesting to see what they do. I've got the game paused at the moment. But uh, they've, they've got a number of very powerful fleets that we are not able to take on just yet. So we could have some interesting choices ahead of us in the next episode. I, will, I have been forced. My hand has been forced. So I'll go ahead and stop this episode here. In the next one, we'll see if we can get that energy bonus back because now we're now we're really going to need it 
but uh, we need to see what exactly they're going to offer us as far as options for our survival. Um, we are at a point where we are not really able to take them on. Yeah, they're they're not thrilled about us. Um, their naval capacity is inferior, their fleet power is superior, their technology level is overwhelming. So we are not at a point where we're ready to take them on. But we also have particle lances in 17 months, so we are continuously improving our ships. We are improving our naval capacity as we continue forward. So it's just a matter of seeing whatever gets thrown at us next. We might even have, like I said, a war in heaven. The next continuum could wake up. The Theklok Forerunners could wake up. All the fallen empires that are surrounding us could decide, uh, hey, we just hate the High Dominion. Let's crush them from all sides. So this just got interesting. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I will see you next time.